we jumped straight into the next filming of the next video and yeah we're gonna review the entire season of the mandalorian season two and just before we start just gonna say unfortunately mitch isn't here but it's been such a cool experience to do this with you alex and just like so sad that's come to an end so quickly yeah. well, so <laughs> I've, I've, it's like i'm i'm as someone who's like never really like had much of an ex experience all in like this sort of thing of like getting to um it's like just just talk about shows and like getting to like you know put my feelings out there and like all this sort of like um this way of like you know just you know being part of this group, dis group yeah. discussion you know about this sort of thing it's like it's i have like i've thoroughly enjoyed all of this i am like i'm so glad that like just the little suggestion that i think was from you to mitch initially and then you just asked if i'd be interested to do it as well like just talking about talking about the show like that's sort of i've I like how this this has become like you know, like such a such a highlight of my week now. Oh, I am like I am really really excited to see what we can do going ahead through like oh, next yeah. year with like not just the Mandalorian but any of the other um any of the uh, Marvel shows some of the uh, some of the Star Wars shows such as Bad Batch. Yeah. Sense. All right. First episode, episode one. We had the Marshal. I would well, I mean, like yeah, saying it's my favorite episode of the season discredits a couple of other episodes that came after it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like this is an episode really like because like i the mandalorian's really good i really really love mm -hmm. it i really love this season but it's sort of like when i watched the first season for the first time i was kind of just a tiny bit underwhelmed i would say mm -hmm. like not in sort of not nothing against like anything about the show it's something that like yeah watching the first season back again after like in the lead up to watching the second season i have sort of learned to appreciate it a little bit more yeah because like i kind of like had i i gotten a little bit more of an idea of what to expect from the opening episode of this season was unbelievably good it was like it's sort of like it really sort of like not just like in terms of like the sort of like the um the links to like other canon storytelling and like you know the introducing of like other characters like Cobb and boba and like sort of developing that plot thread and the crate dragon and all of these other things it's like aside from just how from the coolness of those parts it's like just the entire episode as like as a presentation was just absolutely brilliant oh yeah so i think well. it's like one yeah. of the best examples of how to open a season two yeah definitely yeah and it was it's just like it's great it's like because i mean like yeah even from like through the first season and like in a few more instances as well through like sort of this season it's sort of like mando is one of those shows where it's like kind of so like we have the you have the plot and then something happens like this sort or of, like there's like an episode this is the episode story which is sort of like happening as a side to like what the actual main story is going along yeah but i think like this is one of the perfect examples of like like this is just like how to do that story that sort of story like 100 percent right or, like, yeah sort of it just like it felt so natural worked so well it had like this brilliant beautiful feel of like sort of feeling like a sort of like a classic sort of like adventure serial sort of thing or like the sort of like almost like a saturday morning cartoon vibes almost. yes and like there's it just like it's just this is that 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 episode this is basically this is like everything that i want from the show and this is like everything that this is like okay if you if you want to pitch to somebody of like star wars as a tv show being a good thing this is what this is what you show them this is Definitely. like this is just absolutely perfect and it's like, um, but yeah, as as um, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's great. It was that episode was great. I right, um, I'll just give it give it time. You, 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 you <laughs> well, I mean, like, yeah, I, it was I, an I amazing know, yeah. episode. And just yeah, I think again, I think that's where we first saw the example of how all departments could shine. We saw yeah. VFX, we saw music, and just like all sorts of different aspects, like coming through that episode first episode off the bat and then you know we did get those little like like kind of like just like drops of different parts of star wars being dropped into the episode and then obviously boba fett's armor and then you know you kind of forget that oh yeah boba's not there and then end of the episode and who's standing against the sunrise and a silhouette it's boba so like that that was just fantastic the whole thing like i think yeah mitch brought it up in another video about like fans have is done right like obviously bringing yeah. the armor back it didn't necessarily be boba but it eventually was yeah. but like at the same time like that was such a great driving force to like get us excited because it was like oh shit 
Is that yeah. Boba? No, it's not. Yeah. It's Cobb Vanth. But then we get to like Cobb Vanth. At first, I didn't like him, but then I liked him. And I was like, oh, okay, he's cool. He's a cool guy. He's cool. Then the Great Dragon and just the pacing in that episode was a little iffy at times, but oh, the pacing in that fight. Yeah. That was like, that was the beginning of like this whole season of being really well paced fights. Mm, and I just like absolutely enjoyed it. And just like, oh, yeah, just like memories now because it feels so long ago watching first oh. episode now. <laughs> but yeah, that episode, a great way to open up season two. And yeah, I will, I need to go back and rewatch this whole season because oh, yeah. this whole season has been a roller coaster. But again, great opener. It was a nine out of 10 for me. Really nice. Yeah. I think I would say either a seven or an eight for me, but I think right. I'll I'll put it on a seven for me. The Passenger. Yay! Uh, directed by Peyton Reed, introducing um introducing the most OP character in the Star Wars canon, Frog Lady, and, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I um that one like is sort of. It was like that. That was the one where, like, I like sort of like really started to like sort of feel the vindication of like, see Peyton Reed. He's a good director. He can do good shit. Yes, definitely. Like, that whole sequence of like exactly. the, of Carson and Trapper pursuing the Razor Crest. That bit was incredible. Oh, was that's like, like again. Yeah. I say it every time. Flying sequences are like my thing. Oh, I yeah. love them. And just like this, like it was almost as if like it was like skidding, like the Razor Crest skidding through the sky, yeah. and it was just like phenomenal and the vfx again i know it was like like it upped the game from crate dragon to sky so it was just like yeah it was like okay guys you're showing up you're flexing at this point now we know what you can do (laughs) and just like everybody was giddy and it just made me happy because this is what star wars is about it's about having fun and just everybody had fun with this episode again people were saying filler but yeah it did feel a little bit filler than the rest of the season like that's the only episode but like other than that, I had fun with this episode. The main thing that made it sort of like have more of that filler feeling compared to a lot of the other episodes in the season is to say that whereas in the other episodes it's sort of the the almost want to call it like a gameplay loop because it's like having that it's like uh, um many people make that comparison. I will I do do all the time in an affectionate way of like Mando just like has the feel of like an open world RPG on like the screen <laughs> of like. You have the thing of like, yeah, didn't go somewhere, meet someone, and like, they need he need they need um he needs their help for something, or like he needs their like you know knowledge they have or something, but they need him to help them out on something, and so then it's like okay to do in order to do this, I'm gonna go and do that. Yeah, this one was more the situation of like sort of just like on the way from A to B, something happened, and then he just like had to get out of that. It's all like yeah, even, it wasn't something where like he comes along and then all right in order to go and get here, it's like it is the same thing. But it's just there it was different in the way of like it had that sort yeah. of like. Yeah, Peyton Reed did a really really good job with this episode, especially because yeah. like you know not only with like because we've said there's kind of like references to Ant Man and the Wasp, like obviously yeah. the ants, but then also like just like the scale of like landscapes, yeah, yeah. like yeah. just like making everything like like Din and the Razor Crest smaller, especially yeah. in that scene where you have like the ice and then the Razor Crest is just sitting in this pile of snow. Beautiful cinematography. This is the thing I think Peyton Reed is very good at like getting really beautiful shots he's yeah. really good at that and he did that well as well in ant-man and the wasp oh, yeah. and um even just yeah again spiders hate them but pacing of all that was great absolutely loved it peyton has a really good visual style for like yeah i want to see a, like especially yeah, after that episode of and this one to a lesser the most recent one to a, to a lesser extent but definitely after that second one even just like thinking about like any of the sort of um like the quantum realm sequences and oh yes and ant-man it's like I I can't wait to see him do like just some kind of like just immense mind bending, mind blowing like sort of sci fi thing. Yeah, I Star hope Wars he gets his chance too. Star Wars or Marvel or something else, but just something mm. where like scale and like the immensity of like something like almost like a sort of like, you know, Lovecraftian cosmic horror sort of approach yes! of like getting like having just, you know, having like, you know, just like having it be like terrifying and or and or inspiring just with the sheer immensity of stuff and the sheer yeah and i think people underestimate peyton reed yeah, he's very yeah. talented mm. and i think people will see different after this especially yeah. with the recent episode of mandalorian but even with this episode episode two i thought it was great oh, yeah. um i just hate spiders yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i think another thing yeah. is like great character moment as well for din just to see that 
like he and frog lady had like yeah. just like not the same story but they were in the same situation yeah. they were both trying to look after their kid he was a little bit selfish trying to look after himself a bit more and then she came she was like boy no i haven't put it up with your shit and it was just like putting him in his place and just like i liked that like she put him in his place and he was like oh wait yeah there's like there's there's it's not just me and the kid anymore like yeah. and he realizes his mistake so he just like straight away is up and trying to like make it a better situation mm. um so i guess like that's like again that's the one thing i like like they didn't make din all compassionate from yeah. the get-go because i was worried about that but they still made him kind of have that little bit of like cold edge to him yeah. um and then it's kind of like softened because he's like oh wait yeah same situation gotta help out where i can uh yeah this episode out of 10 i think i'd give it like an eight and a half yeah i was gonna say i'll give it an eight on to the next one, the heiress, which oh! was, uh, yeah, I called it this then, and I will still call it this now. I think this is my favorite episode of the season. This episode was fantastic. Yeah. Like, really good. Out of, like, all of the episodes of the season, I think this one, and probably probably the first episode as well, had, like, the most, the, the biggest feel of, like, being a sort of, like, a complete story. So, like, mm. start to finish, it's like, it could, it, like, being able to work as a standalone thing, almost. Yeah, definitely. And, like, it's sort of like it was so awesome getting to see like getting to see Bo and live action and like uh, more oh. so than with like I'd say like yeah no no offense to the production team the costume designers or to Rosario <laughs> Dawson but more so than Ahsoka's like yeah Bo was like the one of like yes this is like this is like <laughs> this is just absolutely perfect this is like you know it like, was absolutely yeah. perfect though they oh, did yeah. get her on point. Yeah, it's like it's yeah, the first moment when like you see a helmet close up, it's like it's just perfect. She like, just looks like it just looks yeah. like she came straight out of the Clone Wars. Exactly, like, that's the thing. Like, they did it yeah. so well, and even yeah. just like they made it so recognizable that people who knew who she was was like, oh my no. god. Yeah. And even with people who don't know her, they're like, oh, who's that? She has like yeah. a really different helmet, you yeah. know. So that's something I really appreciate from like the the part, yeah. costume department and stuff, like yeah. taking that those extra details and just like making them stand out and just oh just like borrow just sack off as well she i remember yeah. seeing how like she said that um like she made sure like every, she wanted to make sure like everything was right she said, oh like, good on her Try and like get like just like the the, the shape of her eyebrows like you know make sure, like they're, they're going to, they've got to be like one oh, <laughs> I love her. She did, yeah. She's also a fangirl of like oh, Star yeah. Wars. So, like, yeah. that just shows passion behind the project, makes it work. I think it was, and also, Bryce is directing. <gasps> it's like, yeah. I already thought, <laughs> I was already really impressed with like with what she did in the first season. Then, like, mm. this episode, this is just so, so many good. Shots. They need so to get good. her for like a film or something because yeah. she was yeah. really good. And she's, you can tell, obviously, because she's her father does Star Wars. So obviously, she's got like the experience. She knows what she's doing. She's a fan of it. So yeah, I reckon they should just get her to do a movie at this yeah. point because she, she, it's so like her mm, directing is so beautiful. And just yeah. again, even with that, like just honing in on those little moments, like even with like, again, I, I really like character moments. So like with Din, yeah. like again, like sh like shining light on like not only his like growing compassion towards Grogu, but also just like his like conflict with his like um, creed. And especially with a lot of the shots that she lined up, like just was so beautiful. And you can see the anxiety on like, not on his face, but like you can see it in his body language, the way she's like lined up the shot. You can see like how uncomfortable he is and just yeah. like, yeah, just like the way she does it, it makes it all like work together harmoniously. So that's something I appreciate of her work. And also, cannot forget the iconic shot of Bo just like slow turning. Just yeah, I know. There was like one of my favorite things about that I saw was um someone just like had a screenshot of that and like shared that on Twitter. And then they said the thing now, if someone had showed me this picture like about you know of even just a few months ago. And had said this is a leaked screenshot from like Jedi Fallen Order two or something. I would have thought, yeah. I uh, know, like just like, but like I said, it's like one of those things where like it's like she looks so flawless, incredible. incredible. Yeah, it's like that was a ten out of ten for me. I think that I think oh yeah, I have to say ten out of ten as well. Yeah. Like I'm holding holding that ten out of ten for something, else, but. It yeah. really actually was like a perfect episode. So ten yeah. out of ten. Next one, chapter twelve, the siege. Yes. Directed by Carl Weathers, this one. Mm -hmm. So, 
I, I will say that yeah. the first half of the episode was a little bit slow for me. Only when we got to the experimentation part, I was like, yeah. you got my attention, what's going on? <laughs> and, then, and then I got interested. Because it was interesting, like obviously going on the base and stuff, but then it kind of got a little bit boring and a little dragged yeah. out. There was like a few too many bits of sort of like, we just had like, just like a montage of like, just them like, you know, walking through a corridor. Yeah. And walking through another corridor and then walking mm. through another corridor. Yeah, it's like you can only have like one or two of those before it gets boring. So, yeah. yeah. I think like, if Carl is going to direct again, I think that's something he can take into like, notes. Yeah. But... Again, I said this like when we did that episode, like for Carl to take on something as Star Wars and like there were lots of shots he did beautifully, especially like with the experimentation, just like, yeah. you know, like even with like seeing those like, I don't know what you call tanks. them, like tanks. Yeah. Like it's a little bit fuzzy. So it's kind of like you're like, what is that? But it's like, that's what I like about it. Like you can't actually see what's going on. And then uh, the other shot, that I thought Darth Vader was in was like when the doors opened on the ship and then Gideon's standing there. Like yeah. that was so nice. And the smoke just comes like piling out. Like that was All the brilliant. action too. Like Oh, the action like, as well. Yes, of course. Even just like for, like that simple fight scene at the start of like Kara against the um the um uh the the the, 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 the Raiders, pirates, yeah, 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 yeah. Those guys, the whole sequence with the tank and the TIE fighters, that was yes. brilliantly done. It was like really good crazy. pace. Like, yeah. again, pacing in all the fights, yeah. like the fighting areas, really, yeah. really good. And I'm just, like, surprised it's been kept up this whole time. Yeah. So, like, I think, like, movies need to take notes from how to do pacing in fights from Mandalorian. More so than any of the other action sequences in the show, I'd say, except for maybe the Zillow, not Zillow based, the um, uh, Great Dragon fight in the first episode. I'd say that was one of the most impressive action sequences. Oh, yeah, me. definitely. Just because of, like, just... The nature of it and how it's like it's a it is a difficult sequence it is correct it's something that you can't just rely on just like you know all the simple stuff you have to like this is probably one like, where, like all the, the director, elements have to come together to yeah, work. the director the stunt coordinators the vfx team everybody has to be working in tandem to make sure that yes. everything is right in this and that was brilliant and Carl oh yeah park, it's but... obvious that there is good communication on sets and just yeah, like post-production so yeah. It, um, it shows through the work as well. And also, when the Razor Crest comes in and saves the yeah. day, flying secrets again, that was yeah. the best. Just like, and that spin, and yeah. then it just goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> sound design. I swear, if sound design doesn't win, I'm yeah. going to be mad. Like, yeah. it, I think Mandalorian needs to win a lot of awards next award season because yeah. they deserve it. All right, uh, ratings this episode, I give it like a seven and a half, maybe. Yeah, I think I'd give it a seven. Chapter 13, The Jedi. Yes! <laughs> Written and directed by Dave Filoni. Introducing yes. Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka Tano. Now, this was my favorite episode yeah. because Ahsoka has been my favorite character for so long. Especially during the time when nobody liked her. <laughs> yeah. So, like, to see, like, her growth from there to, like, even the last episodes of, like, Season 7 of Clone Wars... Was amazing and then we find out oh yeah she's gonna be live action that blew it out of the park for me and i was like oh i'm on board and then again like you and i've spoken about this and obviously we did in the review like the costume wasn't done a hundred percent right because costume, oh, i i really like the costume is more like oh no not the costume the um yeah yeah yeah. On, yeah yeah so that's why it was like because even i was thinking like but yeah this is after like you know all that yeah. but yeah, that's, I think, like, just, like, a yeah. little bit of a thing that was, like, yeah. It's one of those things, I think, like, they can get around it from the perspective of, like, it's sort of just, like, just this, like, an adaptational difference. Mm. Same yeah, and even the costume for the, um, what's her name? The, 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 um, uh, the, 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 um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh the magistrate. The magistrate. Yeah. She was so cool. And her yeah. costume was like, I was like, I'm in love because she looks so cool and terrifying. And just, yeah, she, her, the costume in this episode were great. Yeah. Like, from, like, you know, like the people who were living in the town who obviously were like living like in a lower like standard than everybody else. Just like mm. you just see the jump from them to her, and it's just that was great. And even just like the landscapes in this, like oh, yeah. I don't know why, like straight away I was like, that's Dave. This is Dave directing. Just like yeah. these shots were so beautiful, and just like long, long shots as well. It was just like yeah. it's Dave. I feel like, yeah, way more than any of his other, like a, a lot of Rebels had this as well, and like a good mm -hmm. deal of um, Coin Wars too. But like, I'd say, yeah, this was his. This is his love letter to Studio Ghibli. I'd yeah, say. 
and like I, it's something I kind of like heard called from like the start, like leading up to this episode. I thought oh, I reckon there's going to be some like a few little references to Princess Mononoke, and like and there was <laughs> yeah first shot of the town, like it almost looks identical to the one yes, that. and I was like I thought okay yeah cool yeah definitely anyway, yeah this is Dave being a bit of a fanboy so yeah. <laughs> So that was great. Again, oh no, not complaining at all. I loved it. So yeah. And then again, just like the introduction of who Grogu was and like, you know, his backstory and being like, oh crap, he, he's connected to all of it. Like Coruscant and then Order 66. And then it was like, Mm. what? So then (laughs) it was just interesting to see all that happen. But just overall as an episode, it worked so well. And again, the pacing of like, like I, I, I will say, like the fu- final fight between the magistrate and Ahsoka was a little bit like slow, and there wasn't much to it. But I will say that I thoroughly liked watching Ahsoka sneak around and yeah. kill people like sneakily, because it just reminded me so much of Clone Wars, and especially when like it just reminds me like the underground of Coruscant just gave yeah, me yeah. such flashbacks. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> memories! And then when she just gets favorite shot, double lightsaber out. Yeah. And just it's lighting her face up. I was like, oh, I would love it. Just yeah, a beautiful shot. But overall, I really enjoyed the episode. The writing was good, and of course, we got the name drop of Thrawn. So yeah. everyone went psycho. Everyone was like, yeah. it, obviously, yeah. it's getting continued. So yeah. <laughs> shit's getting <Yeah>. real. <laughs> yeah, shit's getting real. <laughs> I like how this episode set up a little more of like. Um, something we sort of touched upon through the first season of like that there's like little sort of kind of minor imperial remnant like sort of warlords just like going around there's a lot of like yeah so yeah i'd say i'd give this one an eight i'd say i'd give it a ten yeah <laughs> <laughs> well it's like yeah I, re- I i like this episode i think there were some bits of it that felt like i'd say kind of like with kind of like with luke less so with Bo. And with Boba, this one was sort of like one of the first ones where it really sort of started to feel just a little bit like we're kind of leaning a bit too much into telling other people's stories. Yeah, I will agree like, with that though, yeah. yeah. And like, so it's like that kind of like was like a little uh, for me, but like, yeah, it's like mm-hmm. it, it's still, it's not that it wasn't good. It's yeah, just yeah. That, you know, but it was just leaning yeah. too much into yeah. kind of it's her story. That, it's just that there was other episodes I liked a little more than this. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Chapter 14, The Tragedy, directed by Robert Rodriguez. Yes! And this one was another one that was a really good episode. Yeah. This is probably, I'd say that if the Eris was my episode, this is my this is my episode's little brother. This is like the, <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the one that's like um, yeah, if if not for the Eris, this one would probably be my favorite. I just mm-hmm. think this was this had such a brilliant just a brilliant vibe of like getting to like, we have we get some like development of the plot going on with Tython, which was like rocketingly fast. I was. Oh yes, we had like no. We were like nah, no, not, not this yeah, episode. Thought, like also like getting Return of Fennec and like as such a brilliant character. I remember when there was like um the fifth episode in the first season, like when we had um I forget his name. There was like that sort of like the yeah that little the, kid yeah <laughs> that, that dude and like everybody's really saying how okay. I'm, but I know there was lots of people thinking, okay, so wait a minute, you introduced like this sort of like this this dweeb and then Ming Na Wen's amazing, incredible character. I know and of the characters that survive till the end of the episode, she doesn't. <laughs> and that's <laughs> But yeah, I'm glad that I I thought, yeah, I reckon like they Yeah, I was hoping they'd bring her up, back somehow. They set up really good to sort of like uh, as much as like people sort of like talk about this as like just being like really just an action heavy episode. We like we did get quite a bit of character stuff. And it's oh yeah, that definitely. That I really liked. It's like we got to see, like a bit more of the kind of um, establishing the dynamic that I honestly really really liked of like between Boba and Dan of like all of the possible yes. ways I thought they could have had Boba's role in the series B. I never expected that we would like just get to see him as like just getting to see them as foils to each other. Yeah, like, like we side. like you me and Mitchell like oh anti hero he might be an enemy he might. Yeah. Do this, and then he ended yeah. up being like a friend, and we were like, "Yeah, what? okay, like, cool, he, he yeah." Works so well, he's yeah, like, he's it does. A, yeah, he's, a perf- he's the perfect foil to Dan of like in terms of like getting each of them to sort of like explore each other's beliefs and their identities a little more. Yeah, and, like we have somebody who 
we have somebody who came from like being like sort of so much of a part of everything that he just like wants to get away from it all and wants yeah. to like sink into his individuality forever whereas dan was someone who like basically only knew his parents for like you know mm. few years and was sort of like raised in this like really yeah distant, so like in the complete like, opposite way yeah. i guess yeah and then he's someone that's all like never really had much of a family whereas boba on the other hand has like had what family he did have taken away from him much like din as yeah well. but then it's like trying to get away from what other family he does have mm. even like aside from the clones everything with aura singh yes like she was sort of like she was like an aunt to him but then she just manipulated him she like she mm. used him and in the end he like sort of he couldn't trust her yeah and walk away from her and then it's sort of like yeah i'm 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 really, really intrigued to see what how they go further with like Book of Boba Fett and whether Boba yes. will be. Yes, I I think I think he will turn up in the show again. Like he's not just. Oh yeah, to... I definitely think so too. But I think yeah. they're just like deviating so he can have his moment. Because I think. Yeah. And again, I said this on Tumblr because people were like, you know, worried that Boba was taking over Mandalorian. But I was like, no, like this is his shot to kind of like cover everything that like he left behind in the movies that he didn't get to do. So like, you know, and with the teaser, we obviously kind of get an idea of what he might be doing. So so I, I do hope that we see Boba and Fennec again, because I really like the portrayal of Boba that they're going with, especially now, because he's matured so much, he's changed so much. Um, and the fact that, yeah, again, like the fact that he was open to helping Din, I was like, really surprised. I was like, um, he's changed. But ha why has he changed to yeah. become like that? Like, obviously, you did bring it up that there were some sim similarities between, like, Django and Din, obviously, with the kids and stuff. But, like, I want to see what else may have happened for him to be like, hmm, I will change and <laughs> have it's a nicer... Out in the book of Boba Fett. Yeah, so... Is, yeah. You know, uh, and, like, yeah, I reckon we'll see that in you know, the next couple of days. I think so too. Um, also, just R Roberto just doing directing, amazing. Like, oh I, yeah, he's like brilliant. he's yeah. so good, and just action yeah. was so good. Yeah. And just <laughs> seeing Boba again in yeah. action with his armor is just so iconic. And even for as short as it was, it very much was kind of like, even though it wasn't long, it still felt like I know, like, yeah, so quick. And when yeah. you get to the end, it's like. Wait, yeah. what? <laughs> so it's just like I love that. I love when a show does that. So that's why I really appreciate like how well the writing was, um, mm -hmm. and just like how well directed it was overall. Oh, yeah. And just yeah, and again, it just like it left hints for us like to get ready for the next episode. So that's something I appreciate and just left us on our toes. So so yeah, uh, ratings. I would give this episode. This one was a nine. Yeah, definitely a nine for yeah. me as well. Next one, we have The Believer by Rick Famuyiwa, yes. written and directed by Rick Famuyiwa. Now, I think I'm... Rick was, like, he sort of, like, really sort of, like, came out of left field with, like, sort of, like, you know, burst onto the scene with Mando Season 1. Was, yes! Like, he, he did Episode 2, which was, like, it was alright, but it was, like, it was just, like, kind of more of a... It, like, it wasn't, there wasn't really room for expression. Brilliant writing, brilliant directing, but also, mm. he, like, so brilliantly touches upon this sort of, like, learning more about the new republic and learning more about the empire and like sort of getting a focus on these yeah. kind of like just like the, the the personal side of these galactic scale events that yeah have been, that have happened over the past you know, i was decade. gonna say i was just about to say he brings the humanity to what we yeah. see is just plain black and white yeah. it's just like it's more like there's more to it yeah. And that's why I really enjoyed that episode because I like I remember going into it being like I have no idea what's gonna happen, yeah. like will I like it? Will I not? Because we had no idea what it was gonna be apart yeah. apart from the fact that May Feld is gonna be in that episode. Yeah. Other than that, we didn't know. So I was really surprised with like how much I enjoyed it, and I appreciated again the character moments, um, not only for Din but especially May Feld because that surprised me. Yeah. I didn't expect that at all, and just seeing the vulnerability of like these characters that we saw is like oh annoying. Don't like May Mayfeld, like he's just a yeah. bully, but then in reality he's he has a lot of PTSD and just a yeah. lot of turmoil from the that like that time in his life, yeah. and I really really liked that. So I was yeah. like. That's and really also, good. Like, ex exploring such an interesting, like, it's like, it's sort of the whole episode, like, you sort of like your perspective on him through the episode sort of changes as you go through it. Like, the second yeah. you start when he's, he's like, just like sort of kind of hassling Dan about, about the helmet, 
mm. hassling him about like sort of being a Mandalorian and so on. And then like it's sort of it feels at first like it's just like yeah, this is just this sort of like you know very what's the word like um um a- apathetic sort of you yeah. know, philosophy. But then it's more the sort of thing if he's pointing out like it's like yeah. I joined up with the Empire thinking it was the right thing and thinking they were the good guys. And I did horrible things and the people I was working for did horrible things, but I was told it was in the name of a good po- good cause. And, like, how many people across the galaxy think about Mandalorians the same way? How many people died in, like, the Mandalorian Wars, killed by people like you wearing a helmet like you? Yeah. That think that, that just think of you the same way you think of a stormtrooper. Exactly. So, and it's like, it's, um... It's al- it almost sounds like a contradiction of terms, but like Rick's writing gives like such a feeling of like the scale of these you know galaxy spanning events and like you know all of these like getting the idea of like just the enormity of you oh know, yeah the Galactic Civil definitely War, but at the same time bringing it down to such a singular human level you know yeah and it's like that's something that I really really think would be like the best thing about Rangers. I think done, so too. If it's done right, and if it's like, I don't doubt Rick will be a part of it. It's just like whether he would be like the showrunner or not of it. Yeah, I think he should be. But um, <laughs> of like, because like getting to like, because like um, Rangers of the New Republic has suggests that like we're going to get to see a you know bunch of New Republic characters going yeah. around the galaxy and like sort of like seeing all these different people experiencing all these different things. You know, getting going, getting called in to deal with like all these different like sort of either imperial or like pirate based stuff going around, and like getting to see that perspective of like and just think about like how how Rick would deal with of like what if what if like going to the planets where the rebels are seen as the bad guys and the New Republic is seen as the bad guys because like yeah explore that real sort of like gray area of how like you know. There can be a right side and a wrong side, but like always in like in warfare, there will be conflict. There will be like there will be there are there are no there is no good side in war in like the actual act of it. Like even if like one side is fighting for the for the better cause, yeah. the other side they will do horrible things. And you know that sort of that kind of storytelling. That's what I think could be really really special about Rangers. I think so too, and it's not it's not done very often either. Yeah. And also just, especially in Star Wars, I think it's either, like, black and white. We've seen, like, the Jedi and then the Empire. That's it. But, like, yeah, I just want to see, like, both sides, like, both perspectives. And, like, we, again, we haven't seen that much, so I'd be really intrigued to see it. And, again, the humanity as well that he brought to, like, Din as well. Not that he hasn't had any humanity this whole season, but just, like, the vulnerability was something, and... Pedro, I have to say it, like he did it beautifully as well with his acting, but the way like every frame shot as well with that whole part where he takes the helmet off and then, you know, the like just like even when he's like sitting in his like, like sitting down and doing stuff like he's like framed it so beautifully that like you just zone in on Din. Yeah. It's like every moment and just, yeah, like it's just, I don't know, just like his attention to detail as well is very different. It's more like story based, but like even in the camera work, you can see so much stuff honing into the characters. So that's what I appreciated in that episode particularly. And if he does do ranges, I would love to see more moments like that where it's just like more humane, more character focused and just, yeah, I would really enjoy that sort of story being told. There's such a beautiful philosophical feel about a lot of it as well. Like even just yeah. like some bits of like, just like it's touched upon like really, really quick, um, briefly in the episode but so perfectly done so beautiful of like just the section of like just seeing like talking about okay how do the people of the galaxy see us and it's like just like the whole episode was like all about i feel it's all about like sort of different perspectives and like how different sides see other sides and so on yeah and like how like in the episode we see like the section of like the empire gets like their hero moment of like because to them it's just like yeah there's our, there's our buddies our co-workers yeah. you know our, our, our comrades who keep getting you know like blown up by all of these pirates and like yeah we're just going to go out and save them and it is a heroic moment because like for oh them, definitely it, it's just this sequence of like yeah they're saving their friends you know ratings i would give this one a nine yeah i, d- I would too a nine final episode chapter 16 the rescue directed by peyton reed written by john favreau yeah so yeah we <laughs> already talked about this we like, did talk about this yeah. just then but we will summarize um you yeah. go first alex um let's see i think once again pace and tension and like sort of Peyton is brilliant at that sort of thing and beautifully like, just, done by Peyton and like 
this I uh, once again, yeah, he had like the whole idea of like a sort of like an unstoppable force bearing down on on people. Definitely, That's, like, that seems to be one of his fortes. And like you know, both with the spiders and with dark troopers, you know, we both had that same sort of situation of like just getting boxed in and like you know, assaulted on all angles by this sort of thing. I think one minor, minor, minor criticism about him, though, he's great at getting characters into those sort of like can't get out of the situations. But I think like it's sort of does it's like I don't know. It's not too much of a criticism. It's just like there is always like some uh, some someone comes along and saves them and the end gets yeah. them out of it. I think that I would like for I mean like yeah that's like I mean that's sort of that's the only way you can really go when you get a character into this sort of situation. But like yeah. you know, had both the X wings the X wing pilots coming along in you know um, uh, the passenger we had Luke coming along in this episode and it's like. Yeah, overall, I uh, basically already said all I would uh, want to say about this episode before, but like, yeah, I've, I really like this one. I had my issues with certain parts of it, but all together and like as a whole, and like all down to like some of the other like individual parts of it that I absolutely loved, I'd say this is, yeah, this is still like a very, very good episode. Yeah, I think from a fangirl perspective, as me just being shy, me fangirl, no criticism, yeah. I would say this is like one of the best things I've seen from Star Wars just because like it gives me that feeling of hope yeah. it makes me so happy and giddy every time I talk about it even though it breaks my heart from what happened during the episode um but like from a professional standpoint there are like there are kinks in different areas of it yeah. which is fair enough it's totally okay but um overall they did an incredible job and like honed it in to bring it to a good final episode like we did say in our like review of the episode that they could have tied up the ending a little bit better like give it an extra 10 minutes 15 minutes they would have been able to do it or even just 10 minutes yeah like they could have tidied it up a little bit more but other than that i reckon it was a really good episode i give it like a seven and a half i'd say yeah i'd give it a seven oh um, i think i think with my fangirl coming into perspective as well i'll give it eight yeah (laughs) <laughs> it's like i mean yeah it's like it's yeah it's established that it's like i had I, I didn't quite enjoy it as much as you did but like yeah yeah it's, yeah it's fine any of our theories or predictions for season three yeah sure but yeah i'm like uh i'm also like i've like even though some of our predictions about um camino and snoke and so on <laughs> didn't quite come in this episode at least it was like so like good to get like just a little bit of like additional information that yeah dr pershing is indeed a cloning engineer yes and, like they want and also gideon's line about how he said the what the, chi- <laughs> the blood the child has he said this can bring i was gonna bring them up later but let's do it reality. now let's do yeah. it now so yeah. was that like an like just like a small like touch towards palpatine because like definitely undoubtedly exactly because so, like, that's why i was just... like why yeah. is no one making a big deal about this yeah. like he technically yeah. just inadvertently said it, so... Yeah. Child's blood <laughs> is going to restore order. Yeah. Order. First or final. First whatever order. You, whatever, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> it will restore order to the galaxy. And it's like, yeah, that's all the confirmation I need. I'm like... Also... Yeah, like, that's just like, okay, yeah. Snoke's coming because yeah. of Grogu. <laughs> it's also the... And also that, yeah, even though it's, it's like, he's already got the blood, and it's like, okay, it's like... I, I wonder, yeah, well, that could be a big plot point. Like, so, like, all right, if, you got, if he's got the blood, where is it? Is it on the ship? I'm guessing exactly. it's on the ship somewhere. Dr. Pershing was, like, on his way to yeah. Gideon, so he doesn't have it. But so then who has Gideon, it? Does Gideon, does Gideon have it, like, con- concealed in a flask on his person somewhere? Mm-hmm. That, I imagine that's probably going to be a massive plot point. Like, sort of Oh, definitely. Ahead. It's, like, it would, make, it would make for, like, a really, really interesting sort of, like, um mcguffany plot point of like he has this he has this thing on him that both the empire and probably the new republic the new republic are after to try and destroy it yeah the mandalorian's probably trying to do the same and but then the empire after it to get a hold of it yeah that sort of thing but or, or potentially could even bring in the conflict between the new republic and the mandalorians where he could say Ooh. something he could um say something to both like he knows something that like, he has information that she'll want to know, and so she can't turn him over to the New Republic. Oh yes! Because oh my if, god! If he was allegedly executed for war crimes by the Empire, you can imagine what the New Republic would do. Yeah. Today. And so, it's like that could be a really interesting conflict in the next. That'll season, be interesting. Like, I'm excited regard- to see what they do. Yeah. 
like we have the Mandalorians as one faction and then the New Republic and the Empire both like sort of like after them because they've got Gideon. Yeah. And they need him, but the Empire need the Empire needs the blood that he's got on him and but the New Republic needs uh, is trying to get him because he's a wanted war criminal. Yeah. And like yeah. And also in a way that's kind of kind of parallel to what happened in Clone Wars. Like the Empire wanted the Mandalorians and then like yeah. the Republic wanted the Mandalorians as well. So that's kind of a parallel but obviously for a very different reason. But like if they do that, yeah, I'm excited to see like how that turns out. And like even like even if next season is not like very much like about like connected with the force and all that stuff, like I'm totally okay with that. I'm excited to see more of like that sort of thing. Like more not the politics, but more about like how it affects different people. Kind of like in this season, last season, but more in the third season when it's coming. Yeah. But let's say that um the fourth episode of this season was like the one of the the raid on the base on Navarro. That was mm-hmm. kind of it's like that sort of felt to me like the one that's sort of like most setting up like what the rest of the show is going to be like really about. Yeah. And that's sort of like, it also like just had such a really good feel of like this kind of like sort of almost sci-fi horror kind of vibe yeah. of like got like what what's going on in like all these weird mysteries and conspiracies. Yes. And, uh, it's awesome. To, like, this, sort of, this secret experimentation that, you know, is going on in the shadows of everything. When the next season starts, it's like, we'll find, we'll be, we'll be finding Din purposeless essentially exactly it's like he's so like it's like he's um he's got um yeah no ship no it's like kind of basically retired as a bounty hunter it's like yeah he might be going back to that eventually at some point but you know he's got no no kid no quest no ship kind of, no no <laughs> no rifle either yeah and it's like um and kind of um sort of like you know having like lost a little faith in his creed i guess to an extent yeah of like and so i reckon that'll be interesting of like seeing what they do of like okay what's his what's his quest now what's his goals what does he want what is he trying to do now you know what's yeah his, what's going to happen after that and but either way i think i re- yeah i reckon we'll see, we'll there's i'm very 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 intrigued to see what the next season is going to be like i think there's like brilliant potential for what they can do with it of like sort of i'm just like sort of picturing this kind of um almost like the middle act of um the dark knight when they've got joker in prison oh yes it's like it's got that kind of vibe like yeah all the way through most of the season of like because i'm just thinking like I'm, i i i honestly wouldn't be surprised if they go the route of having like sort of um gideon is just like with them as like sort of held prisoner he is then the new like same as how Grogu was the MacGuffin that all of the different hunters were coming after in the first season. Yeah. Instead, we now have Gideon in that role. Ooh, in yeah. The season. And That'd like, be cool. Getting to explore this sort of, um, having a little more of an ensemble cast. But like, I mean, I'm guessing, I'm guessing that Boba and Fennec went away with them also as well because like, they just I think said, so too. They just said how, um, said how like, you know, his like life debt to, to, um, to Dan is like, you know, he's going to help him get the child back and so he did so they, yeah so now it's time for him to part basically. ways but then yeah i'm i i think there's yeah there's, they've got a brilliant setup to make the set the next season be like really 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 interesting and really different i think so too well. yeah i like, have it be the sort of like more of this kind of thriller sort of um story of like just having this sort of like this pursuit across the galaxy yeah because they've got a wanted war criminal here who uh, has information that Din and Bo can use to like for the betterment of their people. Exactly. At the same time, he's got a MacGuffin on him that the Empire needs to restore the First Order, but then the New Republic as well after him because he's got information that could help them take on the Empire. Yeah. And having all these different sides are like sort of like you know trying to get him, but yeah. Oh yeah, I was gonna say also Din might find out more, like try to find out more about the Death Watch. Mm, yeah yeah so i was thinking I think, that would be interesting i think yeah if there's any one thing i reckon is probably 100 percent going to happen in the next season i reckon that the armorer will return everything. that's what i was also going to bring as, out yeah as a bit of a as a little more of a morally ambiguous figure and like we'll start to see her being questioned by din a little bit yeah um, i hope so that's what i want to see because that's what i was like 
maybe there's a reason why she isn't in this season. Yeah. That's what I was starting to think towards the end. So I think definitely and hope that we do see her next season. Yeah. And yeah, it'll be interesting to see what like the interaction between her and Din is, especially after Din's gone through all that he's gone through and everything he's done in terms of taking the helmet off. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm excited to see like, what, yeah, what, what if, happens. What if she shuns him? Yeah, yeah, that'll be interesting to see how he reacts to that. Okay, wild predictions. What's the wildest possible thing you think could happen? Oh, uh, wildest wild, but... predictions? Oh, yeah. God. Well, I mean, I really do. Like, ever since Mitch <laughs> brought it up, I really, 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 really do want to see, like, Snoke. Yeah. Like, before he is Snoke. Yeah, I would really yeah. like to see, especially because now that we, it's been confirmed that they've been experimenting with cloning and yeah. that they have the child's blood, I want to, to see... restore order to the galaxy. Yeah, yeah what else yeah. is that supposed to mean? Yeah. So it's like, yeah. it's obvious that they're working on cloning and make mm. trying to make a version of Snoke or Palpatine. So it's like, it has to be Snoke. So I would really like to see Snoke or some sort of, like, thing of him somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like, what else could be next season? I don't really know, because, like, I don't know a lot of, like, backstory for Mandalorians, apart, like, from everything we've seen in Clone Wars and stuff. So, like, I'm not really sure. Because, like, I'm happy with what we had this season, especially with, like, the Jedi and stuff, but I'm open to being surprised yeah. and being taught new oh, things. Yeah, definitely. So, I'm open to that, too. Because I'd say, uh, one thing that I, um... What was it? One thing... There's one character I reckon could likely turn up if we're going to be explore exploring more stuff about Bo and mm -hmm. about the Mandalorians. I think we're going to see Fen Rao in the show. <gasps> was, um, yes! Kevin McKidd's character, also based on Kevin's likeness. Yeah. So, you know, I think I think he'll turn up at some point. Oh, yeah. If it's more based around the Mandalorians and the story yeah. of the Mandalorians, I think it will be. And I'll be excited to see him too, because he was cool. Uh, uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. I like, yeah. um, hope you, you all enjoyed the season it as much as we did it's like but the more to talk about coming um in, uh next season other shows afterwards but uh we'll see you all next time yes bye everyone Woo!